I hope everyone's having a good morning today. I am Mr. Ish. We're looking here at a very interesting limit. Before we talk specifically about this limit, let's talk about the background we need to handle this limit. If you are thinking about inscribed polygons within circles, then let's start here with an equilateral triangle. You're looking at this. The condition here is that all the inscribed polygons I'll draw, they must have equal sides. Here we have n sides, so we have n equals 3, we have 3 equal sides. If you look here at the center and then you start splitting this equilateral triangle into three congruent triangles, you know each of the sides of those triangles which are emanating here from the center of the circle also represent the radius because they're going from the center to the circumference of this circle. But then you can also see there's always an internal angle here which is generated. That angle will always be 2 pi over n whatever the n is based on that polygon that's inscribed with a inscribed equilateral triangle. Now what I will do is I will draw a square. Of course there's a center and I'm splitting this square into four congruent triangles. Each of these sides emanating from the center is the radius and then we always have a central angle. Here n is equal to four and the central angle will be two pi over n. Here it would be two pi over three, here it would be two pi over four, but you can see the formula is always two pi over n. Come right here and let's draw like a regular pentagon. Five equal sides, always n equal sides. And then we're gonna split this into congruent triangles and you know there can be five of those. Again, you have the radii generated and again you have a central angle here, two pi over n. But here n is equal to five, so it'd be two pi over five. But you're kind of getting the idea of what's happening. As you draw inscribed polygons with more and more sides, you can see what happens you have more congruent triangles which are generated and obviously these radii are being generated and the internal angle here n equals 6 because it's a hexagon the internal angle gets smaller as the n gets smaller but here I'll just write 2 pi over n where n equals 6 you'll notice clearly here as the n values get larger you are drawing inscribed polygons having more n equal sides and the angle which is involved is always getting smaller. 2 pi over 3 is larger than 2 pi over 4 which is larger than 2 pi over 5 which is larger than 2 pi over 6. And lastly you can try to draw here a polygon with even more sides. I won't be very accurate here with the representation but you can see what type of polygon and then you can start obviously splitting this into congruent triangles. You have here n equal sides obviously the radii and the angle over here it would be 2 pi over n. Here what n is equal to? It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. n is equal to 8. If I have counted properly, it's n equals 8. But what are you seeing over here? You're seeing a very interesting phenomenon generated. As these inscribed polygons have more equal sides, the shape of the polygon becomes more and more similar to the shape of a circle. If you were to calculate the area of these inscribed polygons, and we'll call that a n. AN represents the area of your inscribed polygon having the features of this angle 2 pi or n having the features of this radius then if you do a certain limit limit as n approaches infinity this area of the inscribed polygon with n equal sides will approach pi r square which is the area of a circle as I draw an inscribed polygon with an infinite number of sides 2 pi over n will become increasingly small the n value will become increasingly large but your inscribed polygon will become a circle that right here is the essence of this limit and we have to show it to be the case. If you do the geometry part, you'll realize the area involved here for these inscribed polygons is always n r square over 2 sine 2 pi over n. I'm not showing you how this comes about for this video because the purpose of this video is the evaluation of the limit. But n r square over 2 sine 2 pi over n represents the area of these inscribed polygons. Hence, we are very adamant about looking at these angles that were being generated 2 pi over n and we are also very adamant about understanding how the radii were coming about. Now you have seen the gist of this entire procedure. Limit as n approaches infinity this area will become the area of a circle pi r square and we will show you to be the case. The essence of this video will be this to show that limit as n approaches infinity this n r square over 2 sine 2 pi over n which represents a n all of this represents a n should be equal to or become or tend towards pi r square and how can we do it r square over 2 or your coefficients put them out then you are looking at limit as n approaches infinity you have n 
times sine 2 pi over n because I always like to do the structured approach I will show you the structured approach the formalized approach but there's more than one way of showing this I'll show you the formalized approach if you put infinity here in places of n what do you have you have infinity here you have sine 2 pi divided by infinity which is sine of 0 which is a 0 you have an indeterminate product type you convert this into your quotient forms you know you can do g function divided by the reciprocal of f or you can do the f function divided by reciprocal of g and you would do the derivative numerator and denominator you know the Le Hopital's rule procedure so what I'm gonna do is this I have my g function my f function and let's look at it so when you evaluate this limit it's not hard you know we're going from an indeterminate product type to a quotient form r square over 2 and then you are looking here at your f and your g function. You can do times the derivative with respect to u of this composite function. We have a sine u and then du over dn. We have 2 pi over n. You know in the denominator you're looking at the derivative of this reciprocal d over dn, 1 over n. Here n is a variable. But look, a very interesting shortcut comes out. r squared over 2. You know we have the limit evaluation to come about all of this with infinity when you look at this you have a 2 pi or n the 2 pi is a coefficient you can literally push it out when you push it out you push it out at the very beginning what are you left with here du or dn 1 or n you're left here with 1 or n because you had 2 pi times 1 or n you've pushed this out now you're looking at just the derivative of this but the derivative of this numerator component is equal to the derivative of this denominator component 1 or n 1 or n you can literally cancel them out and i will the only thing which will remain over here is basically the derivative with respect to u sine u and you know from there you're getting cosine u but u was 2 pi or n and you put infinity when you put infinity here in places of n you're doing 2 pi or infinity which is basically a cosine of a zero you know what that is 2 pi times r square over 2 the 2's cancel out you'll have here pi r square cosine of 0 is always equal to a 1 you have a pi r square times 1 and then you'll see a pi r square come about and that's exactly what we wanted and we've done it again the inherent premise behind this limit limit a n the area of the inscribed polygon with n equal sides as you increase the number of sides inscribed in that polygon the area will tend towards pi r square because you can see visually that shape the inscribed polygon shape is beginning to look more and more circular as you add more and more n equal sides the limit is completed for you this represents the area of the inscribed polygon and thank you for watching have a good day